Health Alert is brought to you by OU Physicians in Tulsa. Hello, welcome to Health Alert. I'm Pam Butler. Today we're going to talk about a fascinating subject, dreams. And joining me is Dr. Ivy Norris. She's the Vice President of the School of Metaphysics. Metaphysics, yes, welcome. Thank you. Now, behind your name, there's a DD. What does that mean? Because people may not understand what that, that initially means. Uh, it means I've received my doctorate of divinity. Mm -hmm. And divinity would be in religion? Uh, yes, interfaith, okay. interfaith studies. Okay, now, in terms of the School of Metaphysics, tell me a little bit about the School of Metaphysics. What is it? What is its philosophy? Uh, give us a little bit of insight. I'd love to. Uh, the School of Metaphysics has been incorporated since 1973. Um, it's a non-for-profit service and educational organization, and we teach people how to use their minds more fully. We teach people how to develop essential life skills like concentration and memory improvement and listening and reasoning so that they can really live a very learning-centered, rich life and fulfill what they've come here to fulfill. Okay, now when we think about that, how young can people benefit from such a school? Are we are talking about as young as, you know, five, six-year-olds or a little bit older? What, what's the age range? Any age can definitely benefit. Um, however, we teach adults. It's an adult education program, um, usually around 18 to, we've had a student um, in, the, in the 90s before. Okay. Um, however, parents come a lot of times, and so what they learn benefits their children because they, ha they learn how to do things like interpret their dreams and live more peacefully and how to meditate so that they're less stressful and that okay. definitely affects their children. Okay, now I want to ask you this because you did mention about a 90 year old. Some people may wonder, okay, I have parents who may be, um, I always call them the mature adults, right. you know, uh, in terms of being in their 70s, 80s, or 90s, and they're having some challenges with, with memory and concentration. Um, would such a school benefit them, I mean, in terms of helping to improve some of those uh, um, senses that they still have left or they're struggling to retain? We have definitely seen that to be the case. What we offer are daily uh, mental exercises. So basically people build a mental muscle, much okay. like when we practice basketball, they build muscles in that way. So through daily um, practicing of concentration exercises, people develop the ability to remember a lot better and to concentrate a lot better. Okay, and if a person were to come, then people may think, okay, this is a school. Mm -hmm. So Tom, sometimes we think of school like going for two years, three years, four years, uh, but how is your school organized? Is it by coursework or taking certain classes of interest, or is there a possibility to get some type of certificate or degree? How does it work? Well, most of our classes, the heart of what we teach is a weekly class. People come one night a week in the evenings, and they meet with a group of about 10 people, and there's a teacher for the course and they go through the lessons um, as well as receive the exercises. Um, there are four cycles to this particular course of study. Okay. Uh, I recommend all four. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy when people at least um, complete the first cycle of the course because then they have a lot of tools, um, a lot of knowledge that can benefit them in all areas of their life. Okay, Okay. so it's once a week for four weeks? Um, actually, there's about 28 lessons in the first okay. cycle of the course. So about Four cycles? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a, usually about nine months to complete the first course. Okay, now with this completion, is there a certificate or, I mean, what does the person attain? Of course, excellent memory skills right. or better concentration or understanding mm -hmm. dreams or things like that, but is there a certificate? Does it allow them to get into a different kind of work if they're trying to do that? Yeah, people ask sometimes what they can do with an education mm -hmm. in metaphysics, and a really good response is anything that they can imagine. Um, for me, I learned how to start my own business and be successful in my own business in holistic health. Okay. Um, for other people, it just benefits their relationships, their careers. They do earn a certificate at the end of each of the four cycles. Mm -hmm. um, the first certificate's called Responder Ray, which means they've learned how to respond to life versus mm -hmm. the reacting that we often do as we you know, go about life. Mm -hmm. um, after the second cycle, they earn uh, what's called a key docet dissit, which means he who teaches learns, because we know the value of teaching to help us to really know um, what it is that we're teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and after the third cycle, they can earn a doctorate of divinity. And within that course, you study um, a lot of the universals that are in the different holy scriptures of the world and see and tie together how they're saying the same thing and how to apply that to our lives so that we can live a very 
um, peaceful, connected, thinking of others, service-filled life. Okay. And after the end of the fourth cycle, you're in what's called a doctorate of metaphysics. And um, again, and you teach yeah. you teach others at right. that point. Teach now, others, when you're definitely. talking about the different doctorates, people may wonder: Does that mean I have to have a bachelor's degree from a university? Do I have to have a master's degree? Um, I have only a high school or GED. Can I go through this and end up with that? I mean, what's the criteria there? A desire to learn. There are people who have all kinds of different backgrounds, all different educational backgrounds, and that's one of the richest things about the School of Metaphysics because it's people of all walks of life mm -hmm. that come with their unique understandings, their unique experiences, and they are in a class together. So um, it doesn't really matter what a person's educational background is. It just matters they have a desire to learn. Okay. And that's excellent because yeah. that way you're not, like you say, eliminating anyone who yeah. really would find this mm -hmm. to be a fascinating, enriching field for them or something that they want to be involved in. Yes. I find that people come and they learn these essential life skills and then they appreciate and understand more deeply whatever it is that they've learned and studied, okay. whether it's their particular religion or whether it's their career focus. Okay. Now let me sort of get into the concept of dreams. Okay. Um, sometimes people will say, I never dream. I hear that. <laughs> I'm sure you hear that quite a bit. But we really do all dream if we get to a certain point in sleep. Explain that to us. Um, yes, we all do dream. We don't necessarily remember them. Um, it is a universal phenomena. It's one of those experiences that connects us all mm -hmm. because we all have a subconscious mind. And dreams are communication from our subconscious mind to our outer conscious mind about our thinking, the truth about our state of awareness. The reason why people do not remember their dreams, and that's really what's happening, um, they don't remember their dreams mm -hmm. even though they are dreaming, uh, is usually because how harshly we wake up in the morning. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I hate the alarm yeah. clock. I'd rather wake right. up to music. Right, right. And so if we can maintain that reverie state that's in between awake and asleep, mm -hmm. um, and there's certain things that we can teach people in the course of how to do that, then we're more able to receive that dream echo, um, that, that imprint that's being given to us by a subconscious mind that's telling us about ourselves. And then, very importantly, to have a notebook by the bed and have it dated already. And first thing before doing anything else, and ideally before thinking anything else, mm -hmm. write down the dream in that notebook. And so you'll have the freshest echo, the, the loudest echo. Okay. Now, in, in dreaming, um, and we'll get more specifically with dreams uh, when we come back from the break, I do want to ask this really quickly before the break. Um, is it where if we don't dream, let's say persons especially who are sleep deprived, mm -hmm. um, is that affecting us in a negative way because we really aren't sleeping very long to get to the cycle where we right. dream? Right. Um, I think so. I have found dreams to be one of the main sources for helping people to heal okay. um, and to be healthy because we're establishing a connection with an inner counselor, an inner friend, and one of the things that we teach in the course of study is how important our thoughts are, our attitudes, our belief systems, and us being whole functioning people in this world. And so dreams tell us the truth about our thinking so that we can identify if we need to change certain ways of thinking or we can identify certain strengths that we have. So establishing this connection, especially early on with mm -hmm. children, helps people to live life more holistically, helps them to be connected to a, a resource that um, provides insight and truth. Um, so it, it's very, very important. To I would think so too. And like you said, you know, just we're working out many things through those dreams. So our stress levels could go up, which can affect blood pressure and mm -hmm. all kinds of physical uh, results because we're not having that ability to resolve certain things through the dream process. Definitely. Okay, yes. we're going to take a really quick break and okay. come back and jump more into dreams. Great. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 